a journey to Sikkim, to the mystical land of Buddhism and peace, a journey through shawl and teak forests. passage through myriad flowers. The legendary British botanist and explorer J.D. Hooker said that it contained more flora than all of Alpine Europe and North America put together. of medicinal plants and herbs. Sikkim is one of India's two biodiversity hotspots. Kanchen Zonga, the name that means the mighty peaks of sacred treasures, the protecting deity of Sikkim, witness to the treaty between the Bhutias and the Lepchas, the two original communities. Guru Padma Sambhava said, that these mountain peaks would contain mystical treasures for the benefit of all sentient beings. The mighty river Tista, the chaste lady from the mountains, emanating and deriving its name from Tashi Dar, the sacred rock, at about 20,000 feet height in the Himalayas, from the Zemu Glacier. It is believed that Tista, the chaste woman, and Ringye, or what is usually called the Rangit River, the man, was separated in heaven and came looking for each other to seek him. They travelled all the way till they were united at this point in Melli. Prayer wheels have the Maha Mantra Om Mane Pe Ma Hungri written on them. When they turn, they are meant to usher in benevolence for all six realms, not just the individual. This is the essence of Mahayana Buddhism practiced here in this unspoiled paradise. The Rumtek Monastery of the Kagyupa sect is one of the two sects of Vajrayana Buddhism in Sikkim. The majestic monastery 
was built by the most revered, His Holiness, the 16th Karmapa, a lineage of Buddhism that relates directly to Atish Dipankar and to Bengal's past Buddhist links. The frescoes narrate the entire lineage of the Kagyu sect, starting with the saints Tilopa and Naropa. The master translator Marpa, the gentle saint Milarepa, and others. The wall paintings at the gate of the shrine show the protecting deities of the four cardinal directions. Enche Monastery still carries forward the ordination of the Chogyals, the Dharma Rajas. The erstwhile kings of Sikkim ordained that the second son of every Bhutia Lepcha family would be sent to the monastery to be trained as lamas. This was the Buddhist king's prescription for ensuring peace in the land blessed by the Guru. From the age of four, these little souls, all from respectable families, come here at the Sheda, or monastic school. They undergo a hard life of learning the basics of the five main scriptures of the Nyingma Pa sect, or the original school of Vajrayana Buddhism, under the tutelage of senior lamas. Pemayangse, which means the top of the lotus, is the cardinal monastery of Sikkim. On its four sides, far removed from each other, were set up four other principal monasteries of Sikkim, including the Dorje Lingpa Monastery, from which comes the name Darjeeling, and the Pema Lingpa Monastery, the origin of the name of the fabled tourist destination Peling. Today is the Pang Labtsol festival at the Pemiyangse Monastery in Peli. During Pang Labtsol, the Sikkimese remind Kang Chen Zonga of its promise made to Guru Padma Sambhava, the 8th century Indian saint and the originator of Vajrayana, to protect Sikkim forever.
in all Sikkimese Buddhist ceremonies, the prayers and the rituals are conducted first inside the monastery. These pujas are related to the destruction of evil and to usher in the pure, to end the old and to welcome the new, to vanquish evil and to turn these forces themselves into protectors of the faith. This is one aspect of the teachings of Guru Padma Sambhava, also called the Ugyen Lama, the saint self-born in a celestial lotus. Among his later devotees is included Guru Nanak. The object in these prayers are called Thormas. Here we see the Thormas of Guru Rinpoche, of Lachen Mendarawa, the Yidam, and also those of the Dharmapalas and the Bhumipalas, the protectors of the land and the faith. Prayers go on inside with readings from the Pang Lapsol Pecha, or scripture for Pang Lapsol, devotees and the curious. Many of them from foreign climes gather for the great dance to begin. Meanwhile, the dancers dress up. The dance outside will symbolically depict what the prayers inside meant. The easily comprehensible dance takes the form of explanation for the lay people. Of all the Lama dances of Sikkim, Pang Lapsol Cham is the only one in which ordinary Sikkimese Buddhist youths take part, not necessarily Lamas. Devotees witness the prayers inside, sprinkling rice, lighting the sun or incense to purify the air. While Yapo Sonam Yongda, a most learned scholar, offers Kada, the sacred scarf to the Turma. After it was revealed to him in his dream, the third Chogyal or Dharmaraja, the enormously learned Chakdor Namgyal, described each step. These are the warriors of the faith, as one government document says. However, 
Yapo Sonam Yongda explains that these are the Pangtoepas, or the witnesses to the treaty between the Bhutiyas and the Lepchas, and protected by Khang Chenzonga. The headgear has the Dar Cham or banners, which is typical of the Pang Lapsol Cham. After the first round of dance, these drummers, or Gandung Paz, welcome the Zonga, the red-faced aspect of Khang Chen Zonga, who is ceremonially ushered from the main shrine. After the Zonga takes his seat, the revered Mahakala is welcomed for his performance. In Vajrayana Buddhism, Mahakala, in the black mask, is the upholder of dharma, who is also the same as Yabdui Rongcheng, the southern deity. He arrives as Sang. Incense from freshly cut juniper leaves burnt to purify the air.
finally, in the dance sequence comes the warrior dance, starting with the sprinkling of rice powder, a mark of victory over evil. And the ending is singing paeans and shrieking hail to Kang Chen Zongla. <laughs> As time passes by, autumn sets in. It is a time to cut the grass, which this dainty beauty carries as a headload to feed her cattle. In the Nepali village on the way to Rumtek, about 23 kilometers from Gangtok, the Sharma family fresh the rice to settle down for winter. Past the bamboo groves, we reach the idyllic Bhutia village of San. Where the paddy has been cut and divine peace has settled in. At the Lepcha village of Ray, pretty women harvest local wheat. even as the prayer flags with the mantra for universal benevolence sway in the winds. This house is a typical example of ancient Lepcha science and technology, standing on eight solid pieces of log placed on roundish flat stones, which makes them earthquake-proof. Under this majestic pine, which is hundreds of years old, three holy lamas from Tibet had consecrated Chogyal Phunsog Namgyal, the first Dharmaraja of Bayul Demajong. In 1680, the ancient stone-carved throne was the seat where the three lamas, along with the Chogyal, sat together, thereby symbolizing the rule of dharma. This consecration fulfilled a condition of the treaty of blood brotherhood between the Tibetan king Khe Bhumsa and the Lepcha patriarch Te Kung Tek 
signed here at Gavi, which means our blood. The relics of nine stones tied with sacred scarves, representing the two rulers and their families, praying to Kang Chen Zonga, Lai, at Kabi Lung Chok, 45 kilometers from Gangtok, in North Sikkim. And this is the Rab Dense Palace, built by the second king of Sikkim, the third palace of the Sikkim royal family, the fifth capital of the kings, lasting till the erstwhile kingdom merged with India in 1975. The austere lifestyle and the open governance of the Dharmarajas of Sikkim is evident from the palace compound itself, 120 kilometers from Gangtok. Yuksum, Rabdense, and this lake, Shoujo Sho, under the Ketchupedi Monastery, are all linked in the history of Sikkim. The deity of this lake fulfills wishes made in earnest. It is one of the protected sacred sites of Sikkim, among the holiest, some 134 kilometers from Gangtok, in the West District. This serenity and peace is what heaven is all about. The main festival during the winters is the Guttar Cham, which is practiced in the Kagyu monasteries of Sikkim and which people from across the state visit traveling back-breaking roads, like this point called B2 on the North Sikkim Highway. Filming inside any monastery is forbidden, but an exception was made for our team. Inside the Podang Monastery of the Kagyu sect, a day before the Guttor Cham, While senior monks offer prayers, the rituals include clapping of hands. Like in Rumtek, the wall paintings depict the ancient saints of the Kagyu lineage. After prayers, the Lamas have Shiu Chi, or community dinner, at five in the evening, all sitting in the compound of the Podong Gompa, a tradition as old as Vajrayana Buddhism itself, and carefully retained here. The food is not that of poor people, rice and beef gruel. It is meant to be in accordance with the austere lives of the Lamas. I'm <laughs> sorry. 
Dinner over, the lamas retire, for they must get up and start the prayers again tomorrow at one o'clock in the morning, preparing for the cham. Early next day, the Gutor Cham begins with Serkhem, involving the deities of all ten directions to come and weed out all ignorance, negative virtues and sins from the arena. as the complex array of dance swiftly moves to the black hat dancer, the premier tantric dance to conquer evil. The black hat dancer must be a senior lama who meditates on his roles for days even before wearing his mantle, for his is a major role in purifying the world through this dance. The subsidiary dancers carry all the ritual objects and the prayer utensils, handing sacred goblets with water, representing nectar, and rice in their left hands, which they will sprinkle from time to time. This dance has animal heads as masks, including deer, lion, garura, stag, snow lion, tiger, and others. The intention is clear, as Yapo Sonam Yongda explains. Once the person dies, the soul starts its final journey, but on the way, devils and evil forces come in these shapes to distract the itinerant soul and to divert it away from the right path. This dance is meant to be an annual reminder to the living that after death, these will be your detractors. Identify them now, so that there will be no fear after death. Here comes the black hat dancer, ceremonially welcomed by the group of musicians.
His job is to pray to this fabulously created mask of Mahakala in a slightly different form than that of the Mahakala mask of the Pang Lapsol. The elaborate four-tiered construction has been made by the Fodong Lamas in just over five days from the start of the seven-day prayer ceremony. The effigy of the evil, called Ruta, is placed on the ground, while the black hat dancer, using a magical black cloth and other prayer objects, invoked all negative virtues and all sins to take their seats inside the Ruta, while other Lamas help him to invoke the evil forces by shrill whistles. After this, the black hat dancer sits and is honored by devotees with khadas or sacred scarves and with offerings of money while the skeleton dance continues. The skeleton dance is supposed to expose what man is without the coverings of flesh and blood, the stark realization that life is temporary and the Buddha's wisdom is permanent. Meanwhile, the Ruta lies on the ground while the stag takes position. Of all the animal heads, the stag, called Shao in Sikkimese, is the most important. For after death, it is the stag that will convey the soul to Shinji Chyokli Gyalpo, the death king, or the equivalent of Yamraja, who is the judge of the balance of a person's right and wrongdoings in this world. After a prolonged stylized dance sitting in front of the Ruta, the Shah finally hacks it into pieces. And sprinkles the pieces to reach all the deities of the ten directions.
the black hat dancer throws arrows at a haystack, which is the symbolic universe of evil. The Mahakala is shorn of the decorations and himself enters the universe of evil. And bursts into flames, destroying evil in its own universe. As the sun goes down in a halo of red, peace and purity is ushered in. Chiten Tashi welcomes his family with Tashi the Lake, a generic word of greeting. The family sits down by the Choksis, elaborate carved tables, with the Lakhang laden with prayer objects in front of Lord Buddha, Guru Padmasambhava, Tara Devi, and other deities. The Sikkimese lunar calendar is coming to an end. Here, at the Lak Khang, or the personal chapel of Chitentashi Bhutia's home, starts the preparation for Lusum, the Sikkimese New Year. Finally, powdered rice is put on the left shoulder of the younger members of the family. A crop of nectar, usually alcohol, is given in blessings, and the family is ready for the grand Lusung dinner. With the inevitability of nature, the time comes for the flowers to bloom, particularly the rhododendron, the largest of all flowers. Back at the Pemiyangsi Monastery, it is now time for the grand Guru Thamad dance, as the devotees stream in, and a village fair adds gaiety and grips the ambience. Inside the monastery, the ceremonies of the Guru Thamar dance starts with the Rol Cham, followed by various dances.
then comes the massive Guru Dragmar dance. With a mask that is about 12 feet from tip to toe, weighing some 65 kilograms, worn by a single dancer, perhaps the largest and the heaviest single piece of dance costume in the world. It was designed according to the Guru Dragmar Pecha or the scripture of the Guru with the wrathful aspect, the red-faced angry mask. <laughs> The dancer's eyes are somewhere near the chest of the mask, hence he can see nothing. So these lines of white chalk are drawn on the ground, around the circle of the compound, with circular spaces meant for the dancer to rotate around the mask's axis. <laughs> These lines are the only thing that the Lama can see from inside the mask. Hence the dance takes enormous concentration, for tripping is easy and that would be the most damaging thing for Dharma. <laughs> On the dancer's right hand is the mighty Dorji or thunder and on his left a symbolic human heart. Snakes roll down from the rear of the mask, skulls atop his mask and the mantra Hum is written on a brass plate on his chest. Hum means peace for that is the end of all desire and thus of all evil according to Buddhist philosophy.
the guru thama dance also sees the destruction of evil by cutting burning and in the end burying of the ashes of evil so that peace prevails in the end youths gather around the embers of the evil and bury it circling it clockwise and then anti clockwise shouting words of victory peace universal deliverance so how come there is so much apparent violence of cutting burning burying and so forth when the religion is buddhism Vajrayana Buddhism of Guru Rinpoche says that destroying evil is an act of compassion whereby the evil is also released from the cause of his evilness worldly existence and sins which is why the prayer wheels turn and with them turn the maha mantra om mane pe ma hum re deliverance to all sentient beings from the eternal cycle of birth the day is over the dance comes to an end the young lama returns to his monastic quarters to prepare himself spiritually and physically tomorrow he may carry the responsibility of keeping the tradition alive <laughs>